Welcome everyone, finally got one. Thanks to my buddy, you know who you are, I was able to get my hands on the RMR HD. Now this is a fairly recent offering uh, to the market. This is a larger window RMR that has some new features. It has a multiple reticle system. It has a better auto brightness system. I'll get into that in just a second. First and foremost, I just want you to know that obviously since my buddy loaned this to me, uh, I have no vested interest in this optic. Um, I, I've never purchased it, so I don't have that financial obligation to myself for trying to justify my purchase uh no one gave it to me uh so i don't have any like you know qualms that way it's literally just me borrowing it from a friend so uh and i really don't care about his feelings so i'm gonna tell him if it sucks i'm kidding love you So I'm going to start off with the uh, features of it, then I'm going to roll into my impressions of it overall. And then I'm going to uh, come across with uh, some comparisons for some other options on the market that you might consider along with the RMR HD. So basically this is a, uh, a larger, more robust, more refined version of the RMR Type 2 that people have been using for several years now. Uh, this basically takes the RMR HD and the Trijicon SRO and it made them have a baby in a Petri dish and that's what you get right here. So you get a uh, top change battery tray right there so you don't have to remove the optic in order to change the battery out like the original RMRs which is great. Uh, button controls on the sides are really big, very easy to adjust. I'm not sure if you can hear them. It's, uh, it's tactile but not too tactile. I like it a lot. Um, still uses the exact same RMR footprint. Do note that the optic does overhang a little bit farther forward, so on certain guns, like I believe the 509 Tactical from FN, they recommend you don't run this optic on it because it hangs too far forward, it could get in the way of the ejection port. Pretty much any gun like that you can run the SRO on, you can run this on no problem. It boasts that RMR class durability that everyone knows and loves, has a larger window so it's easier to acquire that dot, as well as having a new auto brightness sensor. So this new auto brightness sensor, is actually located right here on the front. And that allows the optic to actually see kind of what you are seeing as the shooter as far as the ambient lighting condition as uh, what you're looking at uh, as far as the target so it can adjust the dot more appropriately. Now I did notice when playing with the settings on this optic, the auto brightness tends to have a little bit of a lag to it. Uh, when I cut the uh, white light on, if it's not this one, but a higher Candela model like a, a Goon Beam or a Surefire Turbo, something like that, uh, that dot uh, very immediately gets washed out. Even if I think I had a good presentation, I'll bring the gun out, I'll turn the white light on, and I'll have the dot for a second. The white light will come on, all of a sudden, poof, I don't see it, and then the dot will step up to the appropriate brightness level. Uh, even, even then, it tends to be just a little bit on the dim side for me, so I, I run this in manual mode when I was playing with it. Uh, I found that manual mode was better suited to uh, my liking. This also does have a uh, kind of a multiple reticle system. I don't, I, I don't want to say multiple, there's two. You get either the dot or a circle and dot reticle. Uh, I'm not a, a fan of circle dot reticles on pistol dots specifically. Um, I, I feel like it's too cluttered uh, and it's really hard, especially on a slide that's reciprocating for, uh, for you to track the dot under recoil. So that's just kind of my, my liking. I, I prefer just a simple dot. Uh, the dot on this does get extremely bright. It also does get very dim. Uh, it looks really, really good overall. There is a pretty noticeable blue notch filter uh, when it comes to looking at this, comparing it to other options on the market, like even the 509TX2 or the 508TX2 from Holosun. SRO doesn't have as much of a notch filter, as well as the Aimpoint Acro. Uh, none of those optics have as bad of a notch filter, as far as bad, I mean the blue hue that uh, this one does here. This borrows uh, a decent bit of that from the original RMR. They say it's for uh, better battery life. However, I really don't necessarily think that's the case. Uh, I think you get a little bit better contrast on target sometimes that way um, with having your, your dot, you know, standing out properly. I don't necessarily like that that much. I, I'm a fan of not having it if possible. Um, that's why I like running the 509T and the 508T so much, just simply because they give me pretty much all of the feature set that I like in this optic without the expensive price tag. And with that the price tag you're looking at for this thing is a staggering $650. So yeah, 650 bucks for this thing. Is it worth it? Going to be your paycheck. Um, I personally don't believe that uh, $650 is warranted for this. It doesn't really bring anything to the red dot market 
that isn't already there uh, in one capacity or another. Uh, so unless you really like optics that have Bible verses on them, uh, this is, it's just very expensive, very, very expensive. Uh, if you like the, uh, the features, having the ability to change the battery without removing the optic, um, and having a larger window, you could go with uh, either the 508T or the 509T, um, the SRO. Uh, if you want durability, throw the SRO out the window because it's not quite as durable. The window is nothing spectacular to talk about. I think the glass is adequate. I don't think it's anything revolutionary. I don't think it's a generational leap over the uh, previous generation of Trigicon optics. Uh, there is still a little bit of uh, blue hue, as I talked about already, and there's a little bit of side-to-side -side distortion. Not really a huge deal on pistol dots. People usually make that amount out of a molehill, uh, but there is some side-to-side -side distortion. That'll really come into play if you're using the optic as an offset dot on a rifle. You're going to notice a little bit more parallax shift. Uh, however, on a pistol, you're, you're probably not really going to notice that much. So as long as you keep the dot relatively in the center of the window, you shouldn't have an issue. My impressions. It works. It's a red dot. Uh, like I said before, nothing revolutionary. It's nothing special. The The larger window is nice. Uh, it's kind of in between um, the 508T, the 509T, things like that. The, the 509T I found is a very happy middle ground for me personally. I'm kind of simping over it for just a second here. Uh, the, the walls on the optic body itself are pretty thin because they can get away with it because of titanium. So obviously this still uses uh, T670-75 aluminum. It's nothing to joke about, it's good stuff. However, uh, the optic body on this is going to be a little bit thicker. So overall, the footprint of the optic is just a lot larger than a lot of other optics on the market. While just having a competitive window size, it's nothing massive. However, uh, due to that thicker optic body, you're not gonna get as much window as you will off of something like the 509T or the SRO. As I'd already talked about, the auto brightness sensor just kind of eh, is what it is. I'm not a huge fan of it, take it or leave it. Um, if it was on maybe a rifle or something like that as like an offset or piggyback dot, it would work really well. I'd probably leave it like that. However, on a pistol dot, I'm running manual brightness, uh, especially with the higher candela lights that I normally run. It's just, it's just gonna be a better option for me personally. Uh, one thing I did notice when playing with this is uh, similarly to the Type 2 RMR, uh, the RMR 06s and such, uh, those would actually go into auto brightness mode after 12 hours of you not using uh, any of the manual brightness functions. So uh, I noticed actually something similar with this. If you set it in manual brightness mode and you set the gun down, you're not doing anything with it for quite a while, you pick the gun up and you start using it again, uh, it'll be back in auto brightness mode. So uh, when you turn your white light on or whatever, you're going to notice it step up and down a uh, proportionally to that. So, uh, something to keep in mind, you're going to actually have to toggle a manual brightness setting in here every once in a while, maybe every time you holster up or whatever, otherwise you're going to end up with it being an auto brightness mode. As of the price, $650, that is really, really steep for an open emitter red dot in 2024. Uh, this is just the beginning of 2024 when I'm filming this and there are already options from 2020 end of 2022 that are out the, out here that are, um, in my mind, competing with this, which is kind of a problem seeing as that's, you know, two, two and a half years ago. Uh, I, I really don't know if there's uh, the value that you get in this that you get from other red dots. Uh, so it's really going to be up to you if you want to spend $650 on this. Uh, there's the Trojicon RCR as well. I'll try and make a video on one of those if I get my hands on one because it's the same footprint, the RMR footprint. Uh, it is enclosed emitter, so that at least has that going for it. You can just run RMR cut slides uh, with an enclosed emitter, so that's pretty cool. My take on this is to get a Type 2 RMR or a Holosun for around 400 bucks, uh, sometimes 300 if you are if you get really lucky, three to 400 bucks. Uh, you can get either of those optics and you're gonna end up with enough money left over to buy one to two cases of ammo and train a lot more. And I feel like that's gonna be more beneficial to 99% of people out there than spending $650 on a red dot, which is as much as an, a Glock 19 MOS costs. So that's, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, let me know what you guys think. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, uh, I'm trying to keep it short and sweet, give you the, the rundown real quick. Uh, if you do like what you saw here, Go ahead, let me know down below. Give this video a like, share it with your friends, and uh, let me know what you guys think. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.